Welcome back to Seeker Strength. Welcome back to Seeker Stand. My name is Dara, and I'm one of the coaches here at Seeker Strength. And we have a question from our judoko population. So people who are competing in judo obviously know the massive importance that strength and conditioning has on their sport. It is one of the unique combat sports where people from the off seem to be incredibly structured with their strength training, their power training, their speed development. Now, today's question is an interesting one, and that is, how would I go about training once per week in the gym for judo? Obviously, from the offset, most people understand that kind of two or three sessions per week of strength and conditioning work is closer to optimal than one session per week. But a lot of you watching this video will be in the situation where maybe you only have access to a gym one day per week, or maybe it's just time restraints are too restrictive, so you can't make it in to get a barbell and a plate in your hands to actually start gaining some strength. And you might be spending so much time on the mats doing actual judo training that you can't get those sessions in. So today's video is gonna focus on two distinct areas. Firstly, is training once per week effective and how can we make it effective? And then the second thing is, how are we gonna structure that training session? What's it gonna look like? What should I focus on? How will I make progress from week to week? So to start off with, is training once per week valuable? Well, in judo, when we're in the gym, we're really looking to develop strength, power, and hypertrophy, develop muscle tissue, gain a small bit of size, or gain a small bit of lean mass. Now, in the case of strength work and hypertrophy work, there is a fair amount of research, not a massive amount, but a fair amount of research done in the area of athletic populations, training once per week versus twice per week, three times per week, and so on. Now, let's look at strength firstly, and there's a nice meta-analysis done. It's by Ralston. The title of the paper is Weekly Training Frequency Effects on Strength Gain A Meta-Analysis. This is from the Journal of Sports Medicine. There'll be a reference down below. Now, the main thing you need to get from this paper is that when volume is accounted for, so weekly total training volume, there is no difference in strength training whether you're training once per week or four times per week. Now, this is obviously to be taken with a pinch of salt, no significant difference in these studies, or there's no correlation between training frequency and the amount of strength people gain. This is all to be taken with a certain element of caution. So if I go to the gym once per week and absolutely murder myself with my squats, my presses, my rows, my deadlifts, whatever it is, I will certainly make significant progress from week to week in the same way where if I was doing those exercises over multiple sessions, I would still make progress. Now, the main thing we need to account for here is the fact that many of these studies are looking at single exercise analyses. So they're looking at people on a leg press machine or they're looking at people on a bench press. They get them in, they do the same training volume as somebody doing two, three or four sessions per week. They combined all the data from those studies and they don't find a significant difference. Now, the thing I'd really like you to account for here is that the amount of training done, the amount of total volume done, changes drastically when we start adding in training sessions. So no matter how hard I try or no matter how much pre-workout I take, I'm not gonna be able to do the same volume of bench pressing in one session as I will in three sessions per the week. So even though they're not finding significant differences, you should really take that data with a pinch of salt. Now, the hypertrophy literature, when we look at studies, like there's a study from the Journal of Science and Medicine and Sports, it's called Resistance Training Frequency and Skeletal Muscle Hypertrophy, a Review of Available Evidence. Uh, this is by Greyak, reference down below. This finds basically the same thing. Now, this is interesting once again, right? So when we account for total weekly training volume, frequency doesn't seem to be a factor. Now, I'm gonna come back to that sentence or that statement in a second because it's really important. But what you will find in the hypertrophy literature versus the strength literature is that it suggests a possible secondary role. So secondary to overall training volume suggests an overall secondary role of frequency up to and including four times per week. So basically, athletes were getting a secondary role, or it's not the primary uh, driver of hypertrophy. Volume was found to be the primary driver of hypertrophy, but frequency up to four times per week was found to have an effect. Now, when overall training volume is taken into effect, frequency isn't a driver for strength or for hypertrophy. What's the problem here? Well, of course, the problem is that 
when we do extra sessions in the week, we get extra training volume. So this is a thing of, if we take these studies at face value, it would appear as though training my squat once per week is the same as training my squat twice per week. Now, that's not true because I'm not going to do 10 sets of five in one squat session versus doing five by five on Monday and five by five on Thursday. Obviously, the two sessions per week there will give you a small bit more. But what's really important for this video and for you if you're watching it to think about is that if you only have one training session per week, volume is your friend. You must be getting after those high volume sets and you must be driving that volume pretty hard in terms of progressing volume from week to week. This is important both for our strength and our hypertrophy work. So up next, what would that session look like if I understand that one session per week probably isn't optimal but could get you some value up next then is what does that session look like? So we understand that I can get valuable increases in strength and hypertrophy and thus power afterwards. I can get those valuable increases if I just train once per week. And I do know that volume is the most important thing I need to look at. So with both of those things in mind, what I'm really going to look at is the main strength lifts. Squatting, deadlifting, pressing and rowing and not really getting any more complicated than that. Now, when I'm in that phase, I probably put squatting above all else, particularly high bar back squats to below parallel. Then I'm probably gonna come in with some sort of hip hinge, whether that's hang cleans, whether that's RDLs, whether that's deadlifts, whatever works for you and whatever is more applicable to your particular needs, you should be bringing into that session also. And then certainly you want to be hitting the upper body. So you'll notice here, I don't include any major amount of accessory work or bodybuilding work or hypertrophy work because we're going to have so much volume in our strength training that that's probably going to make up that deficit. I also don't have any of those very high skill, high speed power output pieces like snatches from blocks or power jerks or push presses. In the case where I only have one session per week, I'm going to majorly focus on gaining muscle tissue gaining strength, and then hopefully with that increased contractile mass and that increased ability to produce force with that mass, I will hopefully use that in my judo sessions on the tatami to be able to produce more force. So I'm using the actual sports specific work for my speed and power work. I'm using the gym work for my hypertrophy and strength work. Now, the final thing is, is you don't see any of the midline or core work or stability work included here. And that brings me on to my next point. If I'm only training once per week, what do the rest of the days of the week look like? So let's take you're doing three judo sessions per week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I know my gym session is going to be an absolute roiler of a gym session. It's going to be very high volume. It's going to be very difficult. I'm going to be quite beat up after it. So I'll certainly put that on a Saturday when I have a rest day following it. And now the other days of the week, or even on that Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, when I'm at the judo gym, I should be doing my core work, my stability work, my specific skill pieces that maybe I would have done in the gym before with a band. I'm going to be doing those on the tatami, on the mats, getting it in there when I'm already warmed up and in good shape to do judo training. I'm going to get that core work done at the same time. So I've spoken about that session being a big session. We've spoken about the importance of volume. We've spoken about our focus being on strength work and driving volume and intensity on that strength session from week to week couple of major points I want you to focus on now at this point. The first thing is we cannot have large levels of variation in the program when we're only doing the movements once per week. So if I was training seven sessions a week, 12 sessions per week, 14 sessions per week, then I can use a lot of derivatives, I can use a lot of complexes, I can use a lot of very specialist lifts because I need some variance in the program to ensure I don't become massively overtrained or I don't get a repetitive strain injury in one of those smaller joints that might be highly taxed by something like a snatch plus overhead squat complex. So in this case, very simple exercise selection. We spoke about squatting, deadlifting, pressing and rowing. Now what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna write out all of my progressions from week to week and ensure that I am not relying on auto-regulation. So when I only have one session per week, that total training volume in the gym is very, very low overall if I was compare it to a, a three day a week or a four day a week program. So I'm not going to allow myself auto-regulation. Ideally, in this case, you're writing out 12 sessions for the next 12 weeks and you really shouldn't be missing a single set or a single rep, in fact, of any of those sessions. So you write it out, 
you be as realistic with yourself as you possibly can. That doesn't mean going very, very uh, conservatively. It means you have to be pushing yourself, but push yourself in ways you know you're going to make all the sets, know you're going to make all the reps, and be able to make those increases in weight from week to week. Now, the next thing is some sort of needs analysis with those sessions. If you're a judo player and maybe you're coming from a sport like weightlifting and you have a squat that is two standard deviations above the mean, you're far and away the strongest back squatter in your judo club, you really don't need to be pushing your back squat massively from week to week. What you might need to do is some bench press to get that upper body a bit stronger so you can manhandle people around or maybe you need to be doing a small bit more work with your footwork or anything along those lines. So when you're writing out these simplified sessions, you obviously have less touch points with those strength pieces and so you have to make sure you're doing the correct strength work from week to week. My final point then is how to know if you're pushing yourself hard enough for the strength work and pushing yourself hard enough for the hypertrophy work. So we know the strength work is probably going to work quite well. We know what reasonable progressions are from week to week. If you've been strength training for the last two, three, four, five years, you'll have a good idea for how much weight you can add to your squat from week to week if you're doing the same amount of volume or maybe you're doing two reps less with the same amount of sets. You'll understand what those increases are. Maybe it's a 5% jump from week to week. Uh, maybe it's a 2.5% jump from week to week if you're going up in reps and gaining volume in the next week. Now, on the hypertrophy side of things, things are a bit more complicated. So with hypertrophy, uh, there was a question for years if we should be using DOMS or delayed onset muscle soreness as a measure of effective muscle breakdown to know if I've done enough of that damage that the muscle is then going to be stimulated to grow for the next session round. Now, in this case, we're quite specific. We have a rest day following on from it. I would be using DOMS, a moderate amount of muscle soreness, in the day or two days following on from that session as a reasonable marker of success if I have reached an adequate level of muscle breakdown to stimulate myself for some muscle growth. So I don't mean that you should be hobbling around the place the next day. Certainly not. You shouldn't have any reduction in actual capacity to move but you should have some discomfort, you should have some soreness within those muscles, and that will give you a fair idea for if you're pushing the hypertrophy work hard enough or not. In many cases, we'll get athletes who are very good athletes in their sport, but maybe they don't quite pay a lot of attention to their s and and they just kind of show up to the gym, they do whatever's programmed, and they leave again. In the case where we're only training once per week, we have to be hyper, hyper sensitive of what we're doing within that session and making sure that session is doing what we need it to do. So for our strength work, as I said, we'll see the progress going up in terms of volume or in terms of load from week to week. In terms of hypertrophy work, we're going to feel the muscle soreness. We might see some increase in muscle size. We might take a multi-point measurement. So just getting a seamstress's measuring tape, measuring the circumference of your quad halfway between the head of your femur and the distal end of your femur we might measure a, a chest measurement we might take an arm measurement whatever it is take three or four measurements per week you should see that increasing after around eight weeks or so of training now i hope this was beneficial to you if you have any questions pop them down in the comments below if you want more information from us seekerstrength at gmail.com is the best place to get information and then if you want some training programs go and check out the seeker strength app we have an a we have a program written specifically for combat sports like judo, grappling, wrestling. Take a look at that. Try out the seven-day free trial. You get to look through the program, see if it's going to fit your training. It's four sessions per week for 10 weeks, and it is absolutely perfectly suited for judo people who want to get the most out of their training. Thanks, guys.